um, with many different classes in it. Um, but the arthropods have exoskeletons. The name itself means jointed feet because um, they have segments dividing up their exoskeleton that allow for the movement of different parts. You know, um, a suit of armor made of just cylinders of metal is not very helpful. You're fighting a dragon. Right? You need joints at the elbows and wrists and knees and hips so that um, can move. And the exoskeleton provides protection. But once it's formed, it doesn't grow. So in order for the um, arthropod to get larger, it has to shed its exoskeleton. And in that time after it sheds its exoskeleton, it has a soft body and could be vulnerable to predators uh, in that in-between time. And so this is about 75% of all animals are arthropods. Okay, so that's a huge proportion. You can see in this crab, that's an arthropod. Um, you could see the white um, are the various joints in this um, crab's body. You can see between these two uh, exoskeleton plates that provide for some movement. The crab is a crustacean. That's one of the classes in the arthropod phylum. There's crustaceans, which include lobsters and shrimp and crayfish and crabs, things like that. There's also um, centipedes is one um class. Millipedes is a class. Um, arachnids, which includes what? Spiders. Spiders and ticks and things like that. And then there's the insect class, which includes you know ants and bees and dragonflies and um, all sorts of different um, Insects. That's another huge group. So those are the different classes of arthropods. Here. Um, under the joint that's moving right there, um, are those one? Like, do, are those joints? Like, no, in the, each one is not. There's a joint there, but those are just sort of uh, the bottom part of the appendage. Um, All right. So if we um, look at Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is a, a change in the body structure of an animal. And we're going to talk about metamorphosis today when we talk about these insects, but we'll talk about them again when we talk about amphibians and, and frogs. Um, but metamorphosis is a change in sort of the general body structure of an animal. And most insects go through stages of their life cycle, and some go through what we call incomplete metamorphosis and others go through the process of complete metamorphosis. In incomplete metamorphosis, you basically have a series of moltings when the insect or the arthropod grows larger each time, but it basically looks the same, has the same features and structure as the adult. So here you see in this grasshopper, after the egg hatches into the nymph stage, it goes through a series of moltings when it sheds its exoskeleton, grows larger, forms a new exoskeleton up several times until it reaches its full adult size. But it basically always looks the same. It doesn't go through any radical change in its structure. This is called incomplete metamorphosis. Again, shedding the exoskeleton is called molting. And so the opposed to that is complete metamorphosis. Complete metamorphosis is when there is a distinct change in the structure of the organism. For example, in the butterfly, which hatches, okay, the young, immature offspring really don't look anything like the adult version. Okay. So we start with the egg, it hatches into the larval stage. Okay, the larval stage which then transforms into the pupa stage, which then out of that pupa emerges the adult. So those are the steps of complete metamorphosis. And so, you know, a butterfly, for example, obviously is an example of complete, so a fly goes through complete metamorphosis. And in general, in insects that go through complete metamorphosis, what is the job, if you want to call it that, of the larva. Its main function 
when it's in the larval stage is to do basically one thing. Okay, then? E. Get as much food, store as much energy as possible to go on to the next stages of life to support that transformation into the adult. The larva stage generally is to consume food. Okay, so if you think about caterpillars or um, maggots, those larval stages, okay, they their job is to eat as much as possible. Eventually, after the transformation to the adult phase, what's the main job of the adult? We generally don't do as much eating, if any. Some don't eat at all. See, see? Yes, reproduction. The adult's main focus is on reproduction. Right? Um, and, lay, and finding a mate, laying eggs, that's the type of reproduction, and continuing um, the life cycle of the species. Okay, so larva eat, adults reproduce. And so if we're thinking about, we're going to move on and start talking about flies. Fly is which stage? Adult. The adult stage. What's the larval stage? And yeah, maggot is the larval stage. Okay? And maggots, as we're going to see, what do they live on off of? What is their main source of food? Right? Yeah, dead, um, decaying tissue, basically. Um, you know, if you found a, you know, a raccoon that got hit on the side of the road and you went and looked at it after a bunch of days, you probably see that it's teeming with maggots there. Breaking down the decaying flesh, that's what the maggots use as their source of energy. Okay? Um, last year, my wife was making uh, dinner and she was cooking chicken or whatever, and so she was cleaning the chicken and the part she wasn't using, she was putting like a plastic chopping bag uh, and threw them in our outside garbage, you know, our garbage can we put all the bags of garbage, and she didn't seal it up very well. So I went out there two days later to throw a bag of garbage and then when I opened it up, it was just teeming with maggots crawling all over everything uh, because that chicken obviously was decaying and, and breaking down and there it was, must have been open a little bit. Flies come in, lay their eggs, they hatch into maggots which then crawl all over. And, um, so that's sort of what maggots do. So does anybody have any guesses as to how maggots can be used as a, a medical treatment, a medical therapy? Um, eat away like dead skin. Okay, eat away dead skin. Yeah. yeah, often people people often can get wounds um, that don't heal very well, okay, for a whole variety of reasons. And so, if a, um, someone has a wound that's not healing, that's infected, well, a surgeon may cut away some of the tissue, try to take away the diseased tissue to leave the healthy tissue um, to hopefully heal up. Um, but sometimes that's difficult to do. Sometimes it doesn't work very well and the infection can spread. Well, maggots eat only dead and decaying tissue. Okay? So they don't eat healthy tissue. And so they can be, they've been used then to help sort of clean out a wound to consume all of the diseased tissue while leaving any healthy tissue, basically cleaning up the wound so that it can then hopefully heal better after that. And so um, we're going to watch a couple of videos here about, two videos about maggot therapy. Um, and there are, you know, it's not super graphic, but there are some 